ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, members of the Roll the Tape film crew. We are hearing reports that Jerron Boots Ennis will move up to the 154-pound division and face Virgil Ortiz Jr. We've heard this from Eric Gomez, who is an executive and longtime friend of Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy Promotions. Now, he said that Golden Boy Promotions is in preliminary negotiations with Jerron Boots Ennis's representation and they look to have this fight organized very soon so that Boots and Ortiz can fight in February of 2025 in Saudi Arabia. Now, I thought it was interesting that people are expecting Boots to move up to 154 pounds. And the reason why I find it interesting is because we all know that Boots have a burning desire to accomplish a goal to become undisputed at 147 pounds, the welterweight division, to hold all of the titles. Now, of course, Boots also said weeks ago in countless post-fight interviews after he fought Karen that if the world champions in the 147-pound division don't give him the opportunity to fight them and unify the titles, it leaves him no choice but to move up to 154 pounds. Now, I did my due diligence and been told that Team Ennis haven't heard anything from Eddie Hearn or no one in Matchroom about fighting Ortiz. Now, I'm not saying that Eric Gomez is just downright lying about negotiating. I'm not saying that. What I am saying, though, is why now? In other words is, I told y'all this before and I'm going to tell you again. In the business of boxing, timing is the key. Timing is one of the most underestimated and overlooked element associated with materializing, negotiating, and inking fights. And I'm not saying that It's the individuals in the suits and the boots. It's usually the fans. 
And that's okay. I'm here to bridge the gap. To give you understanding on this. From the outside, looking in. This is a good matchup. Stylistically speaking, very, very good matchup. It is. An American versus a non-American. World champion versus world champion. Once you're a champion in boxing, in my humble opinion, you're always a champion whether you're carrying your belt or not. But I also find something else that's interesting. And I have to bring it up. If Boots fight Virgil Ortiz, I have some concerns. Not concerns of how Boots will perform. I think Boots will beat and can beat Virgil Ortiz Jr. That's what I think. But I have a concern because of the individuals that are associated with Virgil Ortiz Jr. Don't get mad at me. I mean, he's the one in the snack program. You know, in his last fight, even though he did get knocked down, but in his last fight, I mean, I didn't see him get so tired. Did you? I'm talking about his last fight that he fought recently. You know, when he had the snack logo on his trunks. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah, that fight. And we know who his trainer is, don't we? I'm just asking a question. Don't we know who his trainer is? Oh, okay. His trainer is Robert Garcia. I don't have anything against Robert Garcia. I'm just saying we know that majority of the fighters that Robert Garcia has in his stable of athletes that he trained, you know majority of them are associated with the snack program. Okay, you don't have to take my word for it. I mean, Victor Conti was here on this platform in an interview that I conducted with him, not once, but twice, in a matter of a week, a total of five hours of live dialogue. And he told me, did this what Victor Conti told me, that he independently sponsors Robert Garcia's gym. And that's the reason why you'll see Robert Garcia being one of several trainers that have their own independent business dealings with Victor Conti in exchange for advertising the snack program. That's why you see Robert Garcia when he's in the corner in these fights particularly the televised one, televised fights, he wear the snack shirts and the hats, right? Particularly the shirts. And so all I'm saying is, when you got a guy like Victor Conti around certain fighters, you know that their performances are being enhanced. You know that. I mean, listen, the snack supplements, the ZMA supplements and the other products that Victor Conti manufacture and advertise tells you that the product enhanced performances. So don't get mad at me. I'm just saying that I find it interesting that now all of a sudden, Everyone's lobbying to fight Boots. Let me be a little bit more specific. Golden Boy Promotions is lobbying to fight Boots with Virgil Ortiz. I mean, 
We know that the snack program works. And in his last fight, Virgil's last fight, his performance looked enhanced to me. And I don't think that it's on an even playing field if Virgil Ortiz fight boots while he's on the snack program. In fact, I don't think it's a a fight that's on an even playing form, play, playing field, excuse me, for any fighter competing against a fighter on the snack program, unless they have their own enhancements. And I'm not saying anything illegal. Let's be clear now. Let's put this all in context. I'm just saying I find it interesting. But needless to say, I still believe that Boots Ennis can and will beat Virgil Ortiz Jr. But I think that the timing of this fight right now is off because of the legacy that Boots can leave behind in the sport and the amount of money that he can generate while fulfilling his dreams and accomplishing his goals by being undisputed in the welterweight division. I don't think that him moving up to 154 right now will give him the opportunities to fulfill those dreams and accomplish those goals at 147 pounds. Because let's say he go up to 154, fight Ortiz, and let's say he wins, which I think and hope he does. The likelihood of him dropping all the way back down to 147 to compete to accomplish those goals wouldn't be a smart move on him physically. You know what? I'm doing way too much talking. Don't take my word for it. 